Red Robin is in the midst of a major turnaround effort, looking to drive sales, cut costs, and meet that value equation with the consumer. I'm here with Steve Carley, the CEO of Red Robin, who's joined us at the ICR Exchange to talk about growth and what's ahead for the 460 unit chain. Steve, Red Robin is obviously a casual dining chain, but it also has a history in the Better Burger segment, which today is pretty hot among consumers. Talk to us a little bit about the proposition you're offering customers today. Well, you know, Sarah, Red Robin has been and created the gourmet burger category in 1969, so we are the grandfather of the Better Burger category. And for a long, long time, we had it all to ourselves. We lost our way a little bit in the mid-2000s and kind of got a little complacent. That allowed the Better Burger competition, the fast casual guys, to get a leg up on us. So about two years ago, we decided uh, not to take that laying down anymore, and we put a program in place called Project Red, designed to drive our revenue, manage our expenses and improve our P&L, and do a much better job of deploying capital. And that was kind of the launching pad for our turnaround effort. You mentioned value being extremely important to today's customer, and I know Red Robin has tweaked its value proposition in terms of the offerings and the pricing. What is, where does value stand for Red Robin today when it comes to your menu offerings? Red Robin's value equation is very important. We take a look at price, quality, service, and ambiance or experience. All those things make up our value equation. In a fast casual environment, you're not spending a lot of time on service and you're not spending a lot of time on experience or ambiance. So they really go after quality and price. So when we look at our value equation, we have to make sure we're competitive there too. And the introduction last year of Red's Tavern Double at $6.99 with bottomless fries was our shot over the bow at the Better Burger Fast Casual Guys. Because if you take that product, add a Coke, and then go to Five Guys, buy burger fries and a Coke, with a 15% tip at Red Robin, we're within pennies. Outside of food, Red Robin's also worked so hard at its bar business. Master mixologists, new menu items at the bar, and it's something casual dining chains actually have over the fast casual competitors you've been talking about. What has Red Robin been doing for the bar business to expand sales at that area? Sarah, when you look at the history of Red Robin, being a great place to have an adult beverage is in our DNA. You go back to the mid-90s, and Red Robin was the happening place for adults to get a drink. What happened in the intervening 10 years was there was a focus on kids that probably pushed it a little bit too far. Adults didn't feel as comfortable in the bar, and consequently, they didn't drink there or they went someplace else. And our bar alcohol beverage mix went from the low teens down to 6%. We still have a bar. It's 25% of our square footage. And all we did a couple years ago was decide we're gonna take the bar back by giving adults a place where they can be protected from kids and families, they can have an adult experience, and then revisiting our heritage about what made us so popular before. And we reintroduced a lot of the cocktails that made us famous. We took a look at our beer offerings and put a lot of local and regional brews in place, craft and micro brews. And then we took a look at the hottest trends in mixology, skinny margaritas, and that stuff, and we put them all in place. We've spoken a lot about driving sales, whether it's through your burgers or through your bar, but I know you're also working on cutting costs or at least building efficiencies. What steps have you been taking to drive that P&L from a unit level perspective? We put a big goal out two years ago that said we're gonna find 200 basis points or two percentage points of margin in the middle of our P&L without compromising our food quality, without compromising our team members, and without taking anything away from the guests. And we created a cross-functional team that fed ideas into a task force to be evaluated. And I've always believed that 95% of the best ideas already exist in your organization if you talk to the people at the tip of the spear or the folks in the restaurants. And that became true. All right, Steve, thank you so much for joining us here at the ICR Exchange. I'm Sarah Lockyer with Nation's Restaurant News. Crunch Time has been great to work with. I've seen a lot of food cost systems out there and I really believe Crunch Time is the best program out there. Using Crunch Time has helped the cafes be able to fine tune their food costs. They've been able to move their variance to theoretical a couple percentage points in a very short period of time. Our managers follow the task list. They're able to see what is due that day if they have to place an order to reconcile orders. Area directors are able to follow up on our cafe managers. 
invoicing is much faster and easier for them and taking inventories is night and day to what they were doing before. Crunch time has definitely changed the way we do things around here in the sense of we're more disciplined. We have the cafe managers more disciplined where they look at their inventories, they look at their variances on a weekly basis, and they're accountable for the results. Our cafe managers love the program. It's easy to use, it's intuitive for them, so it makes them much more efficient. They spend less time in the back office on the computer. They're able to spend more time on the floor with our guests doing what they need to do.